One down, big room, one to go. Derek, let's talk about it. Cue the music. Oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. back. I drop a player like it's nothing. It ain't working out. Now no debate or fuck discussion, bitch. I'm walking out. I'm walking my now is money. I ain't loving. Let you toss it out. Flip my weave and walk it out. Look how I just bossed it out. Now come on, baby, why you bugging? We can't talk it out. I keep it moving. I ain't tripping. Lost another spouse. I'm just a boss. It's in my blood. No, I won't scream or shout. Grabbing my keys. Oh so yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. Back with another video. We're here to discuss P Valley season two, episode five. White Knights. Let me tell you something. From the way this episode is set up to Uncle Clifford narrating the whole thing, when I tell you this episode was amazing and there were so many subliminal messages and sub, what do you call it? The stuff you don't see on the surface. There was a lot of very below surface things that was going on and I picked up on a couple of them but I'm going to touch them on, touch on them in this episode. But anyway, let's get into it. So we down in the valley, but it ain't in Chuckalisa. We down in ATL because it's a stripper's ball. They paying homage to the, the bad bitches of the industry. And there's Jocelyn strippers, I'm sorry. Jocelyn, Jessica Dime, uh, Miami Tilt, and some other girl. I don't know who the other girl is. Um, I do find that those all four of those girls are light-skinned girls. And we all know light-skinned girls are the preferences in and out the strip clubs. So it makes sense. The fact that they got four of those girls, you know, there in Mississippi is a highlight of this. As a dark-skinned woman, I am here for it. Listen, that never happens. Hardly ever. It just doesn't. So to see that, I'm loving that P-Valley is shining the light. And they do a lot in this uh, uh, episode on colorism. They do a lot of that. But we're going to touch on them. So they got now Jocelyn get up there. She announcing that she's here. So, you know, make sure the girls know that there was some of the baddest bitches in the game. She shout out Jessica Dime and Miami Tip and the other girl. I don't know what her name. I think her name was Gucci or Gucci or whatever her name was. And um, she gets up there and then now it's her time to dance. She's dancing to Do It Like It's My B-Day. Baby, Do It Like It's My B-Day. I think that's the only song she really had that really popped. And I think social media made that pop. Let's move on. We move to the next scene. Rome is on the phone. And uh, he gets up and tells Mississippi that she got this new lace front deal. So she was super, super excited. She was like, oh, my God. He was like, pick out a wig. He was like, which one you going to wear tonight? So she, he's going out to these greens and, and blues and purples. And Mississippi ain't really feeling none of that. She was like, all this crap looks ghetto. And this is what's worse about that. Dark-skinned women, we can't wear every color hair we want because it comes off just as I just said, ghetto. So then he pulls up this platinum blonde wig that she has, and um, he was like, you should try this on. She was like, well, I don't know how it's going to look on my skin tone. When I tell y'all I have a wig the exact same color up in there, I wore it on one of my videos like a year or so ago. When I tell you I was so scared, I was so scared because I don't typically see that kind of hair on girls my color, you know? But it, it came out all right. So she put it on, and he put it on for her, and he, he was like, you look great. You look amazing, and she really did. But then he was like, listen, girl, we didn't extend the, the, the tour for to last two weeks instead of one. She was like, I can't do that. I got to get home. He was like, oh, don't worry about it. I already called Derek. He cool. Like, we going to stay on the trip another week. But she was just like, damn, like, I ain't really signed up to do all this. And he was like, look, you going to get out here and get this money and do what I say. And, and it kind of gave me pimp vibes. I ain't going to lie. He was like, because I'm trying to get you out, but you don't want to let me. So I was just like, okay, wrong. Well, I'm trying to get her out of that situation. So I'm with it. Okay. As I thought. But this is what I'm thinking at this point. But I'm like, all right, wrong. So anyway, Uncle Murder is narrating all of this. And he says, a bitch ain't ready to be saved until she ready. Tell me when he start lying so I can stop him. A woman will never be ready to be saved until she's ready. You, She can go through the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst until she's ready to leave. And be saved, you can't save them. But like what Clifford said, everybody needs a white shining, shining armor, and they do. But it's just, it's a fairy tale. It ain't real. That's just what it is. But Lil Murder and Big Teak is all getting on the next scene, girl. They still end up beefing. And it's just like, well, y'all making it obvious about y'all smashing, girl. Everybody gonna know y'all y'all smashing. They arguing back and forth. Big Teak is still in his feelings about, I guess, the postcard. Wrong come in and was like, y'all niggas still arguing, like, for real, bro, like, y'all need to chill. And in my mind, I'm like, if they don't know y'all smashing, they gonna know, because that's how women and men do when they be smashing on a little girl. 
girl. And that's how the lesbians do too when they be smashing on the low. But Lamur feels like he in the, during the argument, I'm sorry, Lamur felt like he could have been up there with Mississippi. He was just like, man, look, I could have been up there. We could have did in my crooked letter, crooked letter. You know, I could have went up there. And Wally, I believe it was, like, nigga, don't nobody know that song. <laughs> he said, I stand for the ATL beat. He was like, man, look, don't nobody know that beat from that song, what you talking about? But anyway, once she finished doing all that, she announces the biggest, baddest bitch because she said, look, girl, we are the GOATs. We know that. But what we also know is they got some girls that's coming up under us that's doing stuff I ain't even think we could do. And these girls is everything. And so she introduces Miss Mississippi. Mississippi get on that doggone pole, girl. And when I tell you, see, because I've seen a debate on who's better on the pole. Was it her or was it Mercedes? This is my take on it. Mercedes on the pole is an artist, as is Mississippi. However, Mercedes get, puts you in a sexual trance. Like, you don't, even if you don't like girls, even if you're not, you know, bisexual or, or if you're, you're not a lesbian, Mercedes will get up on that pole and you would literally, like, be attracted to her. Even if it's not sexually, there will be some sort of attraction. She brings you into that sort of trance. In my opinion, Mississippi, she's more like a damn acrobat on the pole. Not that uh, Mercedes ain't, because she is too. But Mississippi, I don't know. I get angelic, professional. Like, if there was a school for it, Mississippi went to it. But if, if there was, Mercedes didn't go, but she just as good as the girls who went to the schools. That's the vibe I get. So, I'm watching Mississippi on this pole doing shit, and I'm just like... First of all, do you know how much strength you got to have to pull this stuff off? And she's doing it effortlessly. Mississippi looked amazing on that pole. Not to take away anything from Mercedes, but girl, Mississippi, you... When they ask why Mississippi the baddest, is because number one, she got the popularity. Uh, Mercedes is that girl down there in the city where the girls get naked. Mississippi got a whole social media following. And then number two, I feel like... I don't know. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I don't know. Because I want to say, I ain't going to lie, I got to be 100%. Because we're going to be 100 this episode. I ain't going to lie, I feel like she probably is getting more a rise in attention because she ha the phenotype is different. She don't have the big nose and the big lips. You know, she dark skin, yeah. But she don't have the typical black features that Mercedes has. Mercedes wear natural hair. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of things. I think that's what it is. I got to keep it a buck. But anyway, after this... Uncle Clifford is just like, legends are not born, they're actually created. And we're going to go back in to see how the legend Mississippi was created. So we go back to where she's from. She's a high school cheerleader, or she's trying out for the cheerleading team down at Chuckalisa High. And she's up there, and she's, I guess, you know, it's a white school. So, you know, they, they don't just be on the, um, on the field going, be aggressive, be, be aggressive. You know, they don't just do that. Hold on. They really be jumping up and doing all kind of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like they be on a competition chair. Sort of stuff like that. So, she's up there and this white guy, one of the white guys who's holding her up. She's trying to do this, this figure or whatever it is. She ends up falling. She ain't, she ain't getting it. Now, her friend, her best friend, the one who she had sent home on the bus, she went to high school with her. I said, oh, okay. She was just like, girl, look, you... Tied it through, Fed. You need to practice some more. But her sister, stepsister, Alicia, that is, comes up and says, I want to try the hardest one. And she get up there and she nailed it. Now, this is where I kind of identify with this. That's not her biological sister, but that's her stepsister. And she says that everybody likes her. She's the prettiest because she likes skin. Like, everybody is, like, crazy over her. And basically, she's, it's a real, like, black Cinderella story, if it makes sense. I can totally identify with that because my sister... Uh, when we grew up was light skin, very, very, very light skin. And I used to watch boys pay her compliments all the time. She would get attention from high school boys, middle school boys, men. She would get attention from everybody and nobody gave me none. And I used to be, I ain't gonna lie, at one point I used to wish I was light skin. That's crazy, right? As a kid, I didn't, I didn't learn or accept who I am and, and love me until I became an adult. And I'm glad I finally got to that space because that's a horrible space to be in. So I totally identify with that. But apparently the white dude, which happens to be Derek, because that's a, that's a man that we know now, he actually is holding her up, and uh, I think both of the girls up or something by himself. I was like, how the hell 
did he do that? So he's strong as hell. So, okay. So this guy from the football team, because she's sitting on the side licking her wounds, this black dude from the football team come over, come over there and ask her what's her name. She ain't really responding. And, you know, like typical hood boogers, he start trying to basically rib her. He was like, oh, y'all ain't want your name anyway. You you sitting on this, son. You already black. You going to be black and you already is. Yada, yada, yada. You like a burnt, what did he say? A burnt chicken or whatever it was he said. And it never, it never really... I never understood how a dude who's my skin tone would tell me my skin tone is ugly. Because if you tell me my skin tone ugly, that means yours is ugly. Right? And if you feel like yours is ugly, then you don't like you. Just like you don't like me. So you need real help. It just, whatever. So, out of the blue comes Derek. And was just like, man, leave that girl alone. And the dude was like, man, you can mind your business. Either way, Derek beats the brakes off of him and both of his friends. I'm talking about beat them dead. Not dead, but you know what I mean? He beat the brakes off of them. Beat they asses by himself. I said, ooh, Derek got hands. And you know me with my little ignorant self. I'd be like, well, I like him. He could fight too. I like him. But we know now what we know now. We don't want her to like him. So that should have been a red flag that he beat the dudes up the way he did. But I don't think she caught it like that. So after the fight, she basically tells him that he didn't make, she didn't make the squad. And he was just like, that's fine. You always got next year. She was just like, nah, I don't think so. I don't really think that, you know, it's for me, this whole cheer thing. But she asked him, did he get suspended? No, the guys are passing by and they're like, oh, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And so she was like, well, what happened with them? And he goes, they got suspended. And she goes, well, did you? And he goes, no, because I am a cheer. And we got cheer, whatever, whatever competition coming up. I need to be there. White privilege, basically, you know. Even though they deserve to be suspended because they did start it. Because the dude spit on them, for God's sake. Uh, and he did defend himself at, at the end of the day. But it still was a fight happening by both of them. Both of them could have got, got in trouble if you asked me. She was just like, how you not? How you don't get in, tr in trouble and you started it? He was like, I didn't start it. I finished it. But he lets her know because he's getting ready to walk away. He was like, look, girl, I don't know what they talking about calling you throat or whatever it was they were trying to say you but I don't think that about you so now she's all smitten she's just like oh my god he done beat somebody up and he giving me compliments oh that's cute and that's a lot because she don't get that in her life which is where we going next so now so we at the stepmama's house okay so it's the stepmama and the two girls they in the kitchen they get ready for pageants um Keyshawn is doing one of the sisters here for the pageant and the mama was like, oh, Keyshawn, you should go to cosmetology school while she's over there hyping up her daughters to do all these amazing things with pageants and all that stuff. And Keyshawn was like, I don't want to do no cosmetology school. Well, I'm glad because Keyshawn damn near burnt all the top of that girl hair off with the doggone curl tonight. And I was looking at how long she was holding it down on there. I said, girl, you going to burn that girl hair. And she did. So the mama gets upset. She's like, girl, you done messed up the only thing that my daughter has of treasure or something like that. And I was like, oh, she one of them. She one of them people who feel like, you know, your possessions and your, what you look like is your, your currency. And in, and in most situations, it really is. It just so happened that, you know, you're, you're putting that and feeding that into your daughter. So the mama makes a, 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 a statement saying, look, girl, it's hard raising two girls. And Mississippi was like three. You're raising three. It's not just two. You got me too, heifer. Don't act like I'm not here. When Mississippi burnt, when Mississippi burned her sister's hair, the mama said you took away her strength. And Mississippi was like, well, you know, I could put a little quick weave in it or a weave in it or something like that. She was like, she not like you. She don't need no weave. What is you saying? What are you trying to say? She needs weave to look pretty because she dark skinned. This whole colorism thing that's in our community is sick. And it really is something that needs to be talked about and discussed. And I'm glad this episode came out. We move to the next scene. So now the girls are at school. It's Keyshawn, the white girlfriend, Gigi or Gigi or whatever her name is. And it's another girl sitting down. Now Alicia's coming and walking in slow motion. You know how they do for the really attractive girls in the movies. And she, this dude walks in and asks her if, he want, if she would go to the dance with him. And she turned him down. So when she sits down, the, home, the friends were like, girl, you turn down. Everybody, who is you waiting on to ask you? Like, what is going on? And she was just like, I just don't know what I want to do. So they start talking about the mistletoe dance and who all asking and who all going. And girl, the friend said, 
they got the mistletoe and the no, the nigga toe and the cracker toe. Girl, I the honky toe. That's what she called it. I said, oh my god. She asked the white girl, Gigi, you go to the, you going to the uh the honky toe? And she said, no, I ain't going out there because you know I don't really be mingling with them because they don't like that I work I wear TJ Maxx clothes and all that stuff because apparently this is a place with people with money. So she was like, I'm not really dealing with that. And she was like, girl, all of them like that. Hell, even Derek. And if he try to come at me one more time, I'm going to have to cuss his ass out. Sign number two. He's a very, he's an elitist. He's ripping another girl about her clothes. Like, what is, sign number two. But she over there smitten because he's not ready to beat somebody up and give her a compliment. She don't need nothing else after this. So, Mississippi was like, what is this y'all talking about anyway? mistletoe and all that stuff they was like girl you ain't never been to a mistletoe dance like it's a dance around christmas you ask your sweetheart or whatever you know you ain't never been to that and she was like no after this happened mississippi's walking home in the rain and guess who comes in like a white shining armor Derek, talking about do you need a ride in his prius so she hops on in, as she should, because it was raining. She hops on in, and they go to a diner, and they share a plate of french fries. I'm like, where is money at? I thought this was a well-to-do school. But the waitress comes up, and who do you think the waitress is? Pastor Woodbine, girl. Pastor Woodbine was waiting tables before she gave her life to the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. So Pastor Woodbine was like, girl, y'all want something else? And it was like, she said, yeah, you know, give me another plate of fries. Pastor Woodbine was like, that's it? That's it, because uh, he got money. You need to be spending all his money. That's all you want to order? I guess her stance was, you in here with this white man, if you're going to be with a white man, at least be with one with money. And I ain't going to lie, I ain't mad at it. She was like, girl, that's all you going to order? I'm like, Pastor Woodbine, go sit your crazy behind down. That girl, she she's trying to be, you know, conservative, I guess. She don't want the boy to feel like she a gold digger or whatever. But she starts to ask him, sorry, y'all, it's thundering and lightning out here. But um, anyway, Pastor Woodbine asked, mentioned something about it being a date. And so she asked him, Derek, when she walked away, she was like, well, is this a date? Like, I didn't know if it was. And he was like, well, no, because I would take you. I wouldn't take you here. She was like, well, where would you take me? He was like, maybe to get some ice cream or on the pier, somewhere nice to a nice dinner. This wouldn't be where I would take you on a date. So she starts to pan around the room and she realized he's the only white man in that room. And she said, I think to me, I saw her looking at one of the black dudes in there or looking at black men. And was like, I think she felt like I wish that they gave me the attention that this man is giving me. But she was like, you know what? You could just take me home. We down at the house and her stepmama is, uh, she's at the house with her stepmom and her sisters. So the sisters are coming down. She want, The mama wants them to decorate the house for Christmas before their daddy get back. Or their stepdaddy because it's actually Keyshawn's real daddy. So the daughter was like, mom, how did you uh, get... What's his name? Whatever her daddy name is. She was like, how did you get him? Like, what did he do? How did he woo you? And so she was like, girl, I just know I served him a drink on the plane. And when I served him that drink, it was just history. Everything was just blitz and it was just awesome and blah, 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 blah. So Mississippi jumps in and was just like, oh, you missing half the story. You didn't tell him you served him and his wife a drink on that plane. The stepmom was like, help him? You don't be knowing what you're talking about. What you see ain't what it always is. You need to mind your business because you don't know. You won't understand so you becoming an adult. But that's still a girl, mama lady. No. Oh, uh, ma'am, did you serve him and his wife a drink? Because if you did, you was a home wrecker. What Cliff did Uncle Cliff, Uncle uh, Cliff would say? Turning a home wrecker into a homemaker? Girl, please. Yeah, you was that. But she said you served his wife first. You don't want to say that. This prompts her to throw some food on Keyshawn. And Keyshawn was like, bitch, I'm tired of you. And threw some back at her, girl. They having a whole fight. She goes up in the room. Mississippi is in the room. Keyshawn is in the room. I'm sorry, because she in Mississippi yet. And she can hear the lady saying, she gonna respect me or get out of my house yelling and screaming. And I'm like, girl, just go down there and beat her up again at this point. Like, let her, let your daddy have to be the one to kick you out. I just went out there and beat her up again. So now we back at the club. Jocelyn pull up on, um... Keyshawn, because Keyshawn is over there, or Mississippi, because now she's Mississippi. She pulls up on her talking to Dime and all of them, and all of them, and they walks away to go get a drink. And Jocelyn was like, look, girl, you got it. You the next one. You the next one up. She says, I know you're going to make it because I can hear your stomach growling. You hungry. And she was like, you can hear my stomach? Jocelyn was like, bitch, it's a metaphor. I was like, oh, go ahead on, Jocelyn. So uh, she was like, no, I don't really hear it, but I'm just saying. 
you're gonna make it, you just gotta put in the work. She was like, but let me tell you something else, let me give you some game. They all gonna think you a hoe, no matter what you do, whether you screw or don't, no matter what you do, they gonna think you a hoe. What you need to do is get this money though. You need to make sure they respect you and, they, and you get this money. Basically be in control of your own narrative. Don't let nobody else put your narrative out there. It's what basically Jocelyn was trying to say. And so she gave her a card and, Missis and Mississippi was like, oh, you want me to come dance for you at your hotel? She was like, no, girl. I'm just a, a bitch giving another bitch the game. Like, if I need to, I, I want to talk to you, I gave you my card so you can hit me up whenever. I thought that was good that she was her fairy godmother for the strip club. That was cute. That was real cute. So now we back at the house. It's the night of the mistletoe dance. The both of the girls, they got their dog on um, dresses on. They taking pictures. And her dad is the one over there taking the pictures of the girl. But he sees uh, Keyshawn and was like, Keyshawn, can you take this photo of us? He gets in the middle of the two girls and they dates on the side. And he hugs the girl, Alicia. And Alicia immediately looked uncomfortable. And Keyshawn caught it. Now this is my thing. If Keyshawn caught it, I'm pretty sure her mom has caught it. Is her mom one of those moms who just gonna do whatever and let it whatever slide, even if it's at the detriment of her of her kids because she love a man or she want a lifestyle? I, that's what I'm getting because you can't tell me if Keyshawn seen it, her mama ain't never seen it. Period. Maybe she seen it and put in it in denial. I don't know. Whatever women like that tell themselves to not hold men accountable, even at the expense of their their daughters and their children. Whatever it was. She, I, I didn't, I really didn't understand and don't understand how that girl mama don't know that he's a little too friendly with her daughter and that her daughter doesn't like it. You know what I'm saying? But Keyshawn notices it and she's like, oh my God, like I, she, she didn't think that would be the issue. As she's taking the picture, the doorbell rings. Guess who it is? Derek. Derek done came with a dress, shoes. Hell, everything. And told her to go upstairs and get dressed and go to the mistletoe. So she's super excited. She runs upstairs. I think she couldn't get in it. I don't know. She was rushing trying to get ready. But when she came down, she looked amazing. She looked amazing. But that was another red flag. Because y'all didn't even talk about the dance. See, a lot of abuse starts at the beginning. They start off like it's, a good, it's good gestures. Like, I'm going to surprise you with all these things. But it's another controlling mechanism. But anyway, they go to the dance girl and they doing a flash tag, flash uh, between the the nigga the nigga toe and then the dog on what do they call it the honky toe, completely different environments. But let me tell you this: when Keyshawn walked down the stairs, all the girls' jaws dropped. Not only because she looked amazing, but because they was like, "How did that black girl get with this big fine white man?" That's what they gonna say when I'm with mine. Watch. <laughs> anyway, but um. It was a difference in the dances or whatever. So they leave the dance. No, before they leave there, there's a mistletoe that they were standing under, so they had to do the kiss. So they leave outside of the dance. So they're outside, and they're just having a conversation, and it starts to snow. So Mississippi was just like, oh, my God, she's just, like, basking in this, you know, like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. He had to call the car because he was like, I got to get you home to your father because he'll kill me if I get you home late. But she's not trying to hear it. She's basking in the snow. She's loving it. She's just like, this is amazing. I can't believe, you know, I'm experiencing this. So he's just looking at her like, oh. Well, then when they finally get in the car, she let him hit. I said, well, goddamn, Keyshawn. Did you at least act like you like him first? Make him give you a kiss on the cheek? Girl, Keyshawn, the left gave up them damn cheeks, girl. Now, you know that's a damn shame. The conversation that was had when Mississippi... And or Keyshawn and Derek was outside was she was asking him, he was asking her how her shoes feel. And she was like, oh, they fit good. You know, they're, they're cool. And she was like, it was so crazy. She was, she said, yeah, they fit. They feel, they feel good. She was like, it's so crazy. That woman in there was looking at us crazy. Like she was eyeing me down real bad. And he was like, yeah, that, that woman happened to be my mama. He was like, she happened to be working at the dance. And I'm just like, oh. But he says that uh, she's cool with him, you know, dating outside of his race. His dad is just a little different. So she notices another bruise. And she was like, oh, you, you must have got that bruise from another, you know, fight. And he goes, no, honestly, I got it from doing another cheer move. And I dropped the girl and her foot kicked me or whatever. You know, it was just at practice. It wasn't that big of a deal. So that's when it starts to snow. Uh... The snow is amazing. She wants the dog on, bask in the snow. He's ready to go because he got to get her home. But she's just like, look, I want to take in this moment. It don't so often in Mississippi. And they get in the car and smash. She gave up the cheeks real, real fast. 
She did. But anyway, she gets home. She's trying to sneak in the house, but just so happens her stepmom on the sofa having a cigarette. So her stepmom was like, hey. So she comes down and apologizes for coming in late. And she was like, girl, you know what? I ain't even tripping. I ain't even going to tell your daddy because, hell, my kids ain't even in yet. But the mama is crying. And so I'm like, well, damn, what happened? What happened? So the stepmother was like, you know, everything fit you like a glove. Like it was custom, like to your body. And Keyshawn was like, yeah, it was cute, right? And the mama was like, you better be careful being a man's Barbie doll. Because you're going to mess around and be a man's Barbie doll. He, and he likes that, but he'll pick another one. A word. That was a, she was trying to stop you down. You was getting gems from a lot of people, but you ain't going to pick it up, Keyshawn. I'm sorry, you just didn't. But she was like, be careful with that. But like Uncle Clifford said, she don't listen. We moved to the next scene. They're at the hotel. They're having a party. It's a party at the hotel. Keyshawn got all this doggone money. She basking and bathing and doing snow angels and all this money. Wody, Wody says Mississippi is basically the biggest star out of everybody that's on that tour. And she's happy that she's about to do the tour. She's ready to go on the second week that uh, that Rome added and all that stuff. Him and Lil Murda get into it. Now, as they're getting into it, Keyshawn is looking over at doggone uh, Wody. And they kind of like making faces but having a conversation. And she was like, he was like, you think they... Or she was like, you think they fucking? And he was like, yeah, I think they fucking. I was just like, black people, we know we have a way of communicating, boy. I ain't even gonna lie. So he, Lil Murda gets up to go check on Big T. And Wardy was like, man, he might need him a bitch. But the way Lil Murda turned around and looked at him, I was like, damn. Lil Murda was like, don't play with my, my man. Don't do that. Don't do that part. That don't, that's the part you don't need to do. Rome comes in. Rome comes in and was like, y'all ain't finished counting up all this money, man. You know, Mississippi, we got to go. He gives Lil Murder a room key so they can have a room. And Lil Murder was like, bet, because uh, Rome said they going to Jocelyn's party at her house. So uh, Lil Murder was like, bet, like I can get my shit off up in there. And basically, Rome was like, man, I'm tired of y'all niggas. Like, I'm, not, I'm only bringing Mississippi. Like, this ain't, I ain't out here for y'all. I'm out here for her. This her little promo thing. Y'all need to just fall back and chill. Bad enough, I'm throwing my name around getting y'all all these five-star rooms and all that stuff. You know, you should be grateful for that. Big T comes over and was like, I don't have to be grateful for a damn thing. You could take your rooms and shove it up your ass. But Ron was like, oh, yeah, I get it. See, you're not used to nice things in five-star beds. You like them cots. You know, three hots to the cot. That's what you used to. So Rome looked not wrong. T looked like he wanted to take his head off, but I feel like T you know he'll probably have him hemmed up somewhere so he ain't do it. So he walks out the door. Cause he threw the cards back at him and, and Roman told Rome, we don't need your shit. And he told Lil Murder, I'll sleep in the damn hearse. I would not sleep in this damn room. I'm out of here. She tells Wody and Murder, she was like, look, man, I'm gonna get the keys from him when I go up there. Don't worry about it. Don't even trip. But Wody was like, look. That's cool. He was like, but he just made a comment like, I love you better with your natural hair, with a natural look. Basically, he not really feeling the wigs. I don't know what that was about, Woody. Do you like her too? Let me find out. Anyway, we go to a flashback or we're back in her Keyshawn days and she's pregnant. She's pregnant. She's laying on this couch and Derek is picking out, picking out these clothes. He's picking out these clothes that I guess his mama got him, but she don't like the colors of the clothes. She was like, I don't like this. I don't like that. And he was like, look, my mama is trying. She's doing the best she can. She's helping. And Keisha was like, finally, because she didn't help before. And Derek was like, damn, like, cut my mama some slack. She's trying to do it the best that she can. Keisha feels like that's BS because at the end of the day, uh, your mama and them ain't help with nothing. They didn't even put the, the, down, the down payment down on the condo. My daddy had to do that. I'm the one slaving and working at Walgreens while I'm eight months pregnant. You don't work no well. And I'm taking care of the whole thing. Like, it's all down from me. And I was like, so he ain't never had a job. He been going on interviews since y'all got together. Girl, what? But he don't like that. He goes over there and choke her ass out. I'm talking about choke her out. And I was baffled because I was like, damn, like, she is pregnant with your baby. And I don't even think the choking was the worst. I think the worst was what he was saying. He was like, you trapped me. You got, you pregnant and now I'm trapped with you. And the reason 
I, my mom and daddy didn't let me help me out because I was with you. I regret putting my thing up in you and damn near calling her everything but a nigga bitch. I said, what? Keyshawn, you should have left him a long time ago. Let him go back to his family. Fat, go down there to the child support court. You don't need that. But he choked her out and I was just like, oh, Lord. But he said his mama kicked her out, kicked him out for her. Like, that's the reason that she hadn't been helping him. And I thought that was crazy. So she leaves and we move to the next scene. She's up in there getting ready. And Rome tells her that the wig deal fell through. He didn't like the numbers on the back end. But he wants to introduce a stripper heel shoe, a stripper stiletto shoe. She's not trying to do that. She wants to evolve and get out of the strip club. But Big Ron was like, man, look, you're going to do better doing, you know, with the heel. Just try the heels on. That, to me, was subtle, him also being controlling as well. Because it's just like, the girl don't want to do no damn stripper heels. But you're going to make her do stripper heels? And then furthermore, why you didn't like the numbers on the weed deal? I feel like there wasn't nothing wrong with the numbers. You just wanted to control her. So he tell her try the heels on and put her floss on or her outfit or whatever and see how it looks together. He was like, and I'm going to go get dressed. So boom. He leaves. She put her outfit on. She in the bathroom. All of a sudden, she, she, she see a light. He's video recording her on the camera with a light on. But he got on a robe and the robe is open. And they got peen slinging all over the place. Now, if Ron wasn't the creep that he was, that would have been all right. But he's a creep. So... She's like, Ron, what are you doing? Like, your robe is open. Why are you taping me? Like, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, my bad. I didn't know it was open, but do you like what you see? And she was just like, no. So he's basically trying to throw advances at her. And she's not having it because she really don't want to do it. So she tries to walk out of the room. She tries to walk out of the room because she says, look, we're going to be late. We got to get out of here. But he starts touching on her. And he was like, look, I can do more for you than, you know, I can do more for you because all the things I've done, you owe me. Like, you, none, all this shit is pending. You still owe me. So you need to let me do what I do because all the things I do for you, basically, is what he's saying. So he's trying to smash, but trying to use the fact that he helps her as the reason why she should. But she's not having that. She was just like, no. So he, she was like, look, just stop. Leave me alone. And he was like, so you don't want to strip for me, but you'll strip for all these other people for free. She then goes on to say, look, I'm doing what I do because I'm, I'm in control. Like, I make these dudes feel like them paying me money is them having control. But the, I have the control because ultimately I sell them a fantasy and they're not going to smash. And then he goes, yeah, I seen them little nasty lap dances you be doing in the back. That's you, you trying to act all holier than thou, you know. But at the end of the day, I be seeing what you be doing. So he throws her on the bed, snatches off her dog on one side of her outfit, and tries to basically R her. She ended up kicking him and getting away. And he kind of grabbed her shoe and grabbed, well, grabbed her leg and ended up with the one shoe, Cinderella reference. Um, and she runs down the hall and she's banging on the door. Now the dog on camera flipped back to her banging on her stepmama door after Derek done choked her out. So she banging on the stepmama door. The stepmama opened the door and it's in the rain. She was like, look, I'm crying. I have nowhere else to go. I need to stay here. The stepmama was like, I can't have you in here around my, my daughters with all of that. You got to face the, the choices you made. You made choices. And let me tell y'all something. I grew up in high school where a lot of girls got pregnant in high school. And there were some of these mamas out there who were very holier than thou just the same. Then one of my homegirls threw a baby shower and everybody mama was like, no, you can't go because it's going to rub off on you like as if it's a doggone disease. And guess what? All of their daughters is out of way like with babies. You should have just let her go to the baby shower fat. But the mama said she don't want her around her other daughters. And she see Alicia in the corner watching the whole thing. Because Alicia probably felt bad, you know, that she's getting kicked out or whatever. So she was like, look, you can't come here. Keyshawn goes, well, what did my daddy say? She said, your daddy's on board with it. Girl, you should have called your daddy yourself. We move to the next scene. Or in Back to the Future, Keyshawn on Mississippi runs into Wody's room because she's banging on his door. He opens the door and she goes in there and tells him that basically uh, Rome tried to R her. He tried to R her and she got away, you know, and, and that was like she's terrified. So now Wody was just so calm and so collected. You know, that's the type of people you really need to be, be afraid of. So Wody was just like, damn, like, that's deep, like. She basically was like, all he wanted to do was smash the whole time. And she felt stupid because she was manipulated or thought that he really was wanting to help her. But she, he tells her, Wody was like, Wody was like, look, you're not stupid. And she said, yeah, but you know, the only other part is he's got, he knows about little murder. 
in in his sexuality. And he goes, well, how do you know? She was like, he has a video of it. He showed me a video of Lil Murda. She tells him, look, I want to go home. At this point, I'm over it. I'm ready to go home. I want to go home. And he was like, well, what about the tour? She was like, scrap that tour. I'm going home. Tour canceled. I'm done. And I, you're right. Because, I mean, how can she go on a tour? And he just did that. He, she can't be around him, please. So now we move to the next scene. She's back at the baby daddy house. This is back when she's pregnant. She goes back in. And she walks into her room and sees this flowers all over. So he comes in and apologizes and say, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. Another red flag. That's typically how abusers do. They abuse you, then reel you in with sympathy. You know, that's typically how it goes. So I'm like, girl, you're still not listening because he promised he ain't going to do it again. But he said he want to be better than his dad. So we move to the next scene. We're back in the present. She's home off the road early. Uh, Derek is in the kitchen with the kids. So she comes in and he was like, well, what you doing home early? And she says, oh, Rome basically wanted us to uh, go back and regroup because he's got to uh, do a whole bunch of stuff with the um, tour and everything. But Derek was like, but he called me and asked me for an extension and I already told him it was cool. I just don't really understand why you're there. Why you here? And she was just like, look, I'm just here. So she goes to try to touch her little boy, but the little boy was like kept yanking away and like really fussy. So she was just like, what's wrong with him? And he was like, well, maybe you've been away and he's just, you know, being a child or whatever the case. But she's not really understanding and believing that. She takes the baby to the doctor. The doctor was like, oh, he dislocated his elbow. And she goes, what the hell? And he was like, but it's typical in kids around that age. It's just a small dislocation. We just put it back in. But the nurse saw all the bruises on the baby back. So the nurse kind of gave the doctor the eye. And the doctor was like, oh, this is a different type of case. So somehow, I guess through TV land, that girl made it home because in real life cases, CPS would have came through and shut the whole thing down. And she would have been detained until they found out what the hell was happening. Somebody would have went to jail though. Or they had, at the very least, they would have taken the kid. So she comes in, she put the baby down. She puts the baby in the doggone room and comes out the door and do what the, you should never do when you come and you deal with abusive men. Ladies, never, ever, ever, ever announce your departure. Never announce your departure. Never. He already in there getting ready for the interview, girl. All you had to do was let him walk out the door, grab your kids, and get up out of there. Like Ike did Tina, or Tina did Ike on What's Love Got to Do With It. That's all you had to do. Why do you have to even confront him? But she confronts him and was like, the doctor said he's been abused. Like, you dislocated his elbow. And he goes, I would never do that. Like, why would you say that I would do that? And she goes, listen, I just came from the doctor. He got bruises all up his back. You are abusing my son. And she says, listen, you can do whatever you want to me. Beat me. But don't ever touch my kids. Don't ever think it's, a, it's okay for you to touch my kids. Like, that's a whole different story. He feels, he feels like she's lying. So she had to actually show him the papers so he can understand that she's not lying. So he says, look, I'm just raising my sons like my daddy raised me. And I'm thinking, that's why you so messed up. Why would you want to repeat that? Like, what are you, what? He said, but let me go. I got an interview. Girl, I guess Keyshawn done had enough. Keyshawn said, well, I, why are you going on this interview? You ain't going to get it. You never get the jobs. I'm going to just be here stuck taking care of my three kids. Got my two sons and you, my third one. Girl, that man saw rage in his eyes. And when he, when I say he beat her up and down that house, drug her through that house. But the most scary part was he grabbed the iron. He grabbed the iron and he put the iron to her face because it was hot. And she's over there like just freaking out. And I'm on the edge of my seat like, oh my God, he about to burn this girl face off like on good times. But Keyshawn was like, Mississippi was like, look, burn me anywhere. Just don't do my face. Just don't do my face. And he like wants to burn her face off. He really does. But I don't know if he realized she need her face. You know, I don't know if she's saying not my face because she knows as a dark skinned girl, at least that's what she has. She's, you know, she's that typical in our community, pretty for a dark skinned girl. I don't know if that was the case, but he ends up storming out of the house and say he going to raise his kids how he want to raise his kids. And, you know, it is what it is. So I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God, like he really was about to burn his lady face off. That is insane. Uncle Cliff's narration, one of the quotes he said was, white knights only exist in the fairy tales. And they do. We move to the next scene. Wally goes to see Rome. 
Worry. Say, Worry. Worry go holler at Big Rome. You know what I'm saying? Big one, not the little one. So he pulls up Rome, on Rome and told Rome, you know, let's go talk in the back. Boom. They go in the back. Child, they get to the back. Um, Rome was like, hey, I got a, a party favor for you. Some little cocaine. Because you know everybody know well, Big Rome like the sugar booger. You know what I'm saying? The booger sugar, whatever you call it. So he's lining it up or whatever because he already has some lines on the plate. He's lining it up, but he's getting a little suspicious. So he looked at Rome and was like, you take a, a sniff first. Not wrong. Wody takes a sniff of the coke, and then Big T takes a sniff. Now, in my mind, I'm like, so he can't be poisoning them. But it didn't dawn on me until after that, Rome, not Rome, uh, Wody took a sniff that was already on the plate, not one of the lines he had cut that he gave him. No, before that, he asked Rome what he was going to do with uh, with Keyshawn leaving off the tour, like how he going to be able to move forward. And he was like, man, them hoes come a dime a dozen, I get another one. He said, well, what about Lil Murder? He was like, man, Lil Murder really ain't popped off yet. Like, I get somebody else, one of my other artists that's going to pop off hotter than him. I'm not stunting no Lil Murder. So Rome now knows, not Rome, Wardy now knows that he really don't give a damn about none of them. So he, Rome then, not Rome. So Wardy then goes, have you ever watched somebody die? And Rome is over there getting a little light-winded. And he was just like, yeah, boy, you know I watched my mama die. Like, wow, what's up? Wody goes, so do you want an open casket or a closed casket? Wody is asking him all these dreadful questions. Like, how do you want to be buried? Do you want an open or closed casket? Like, and Rome is over there choking to death. Literally choking to death. Wody says, death can be obvious or a sneaky bitch. And he starts to say, you know, you want to die like this woman here. And I noticed that a lot of the deaths he was referencing were women who were uh, abused at the hands of men. I caught that. So, Wody, not Wody, Rome is choking. He's choking, trying to save his life. And basically, Wody flashes the fentanyl and was like, at least you get to know you about to die. This freaks Rome out, but it can't freak him out too much because he can't even catch a breath. And girl, Wardy walked out of there as smooth and calm and collected. And when I tell you all the people saw, saw Rome on the floor and everybody said just how it be, oh, somebody called 911, he overdosed. Whole time somebody gave him some fentanyl. I think that happens 90% of the times people that die on fentanyl. I think that happens 90%. It's purposely given to him. Nobody willingly does fentanyl. But Wardy was a nice shining armor in this one. But is he? Girl, this was a lot. This episode was a whole lot. Listen, I love that it touched on all these topics. I hope that uh, Keyshawn go ahead on and take care of Derek. She's just going to have to pop him upside the head. There's nothing else she could do. I don't think Wardy needs to do it. Wardy already took care of Ron. Keyshawn, go ahead on, get your little pistol and pop him upside the head so we can move on. Please. And, you know, shout out to Wardy, but he give me too many dark vibes i wouldn't want to date him neither hell he wouldn't be putting no fentanyl in my cereal anyway y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about p valley white white what was it white night or whatever it was girl please don't forget to like subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll see you later bye